Stephen and Lavo. Welcome me to Deep Life Bible Church Ministry, Charlottesville, United States. It is our belief that you will listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, yes. and other ministers of God from our ministry, and they are sharing the mind of God with you and your family. God bless you and remain blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for the great things you are doing. Thank you for the joy of the Lord from all these who are giving testimonies. Testimonies there, testimonies in every region, every state, and every country. Lord, you have done a lot for us this year. We give the glory to you, accept our praises in Jesus' name. And Lord, here we are again. You still want to bless us. And I pray that your blessings will come upon all your people without any hindrance or interruption in Jesus' name. Take us over. Lord, take us over. I will pray, Lord, that all the desires of every heart you will fulfill in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We are coming back to Mark. Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 47. All through to verse 56. Mark chapter 6. Reading from verse 47. And when the evening was come, the sheep was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. Here is another situation again, a different situation. But it is still describing the storms of life. And this one, we're going to look at Christ's power. Over all the storms of life. Christ's power. Over all the storms of life. Verse 48. And he saw them toiling in ruin. For the wind was contrary unto them. And he bowed the fourth watch of the night. He comes unto them. Walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. Verse 49. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and they cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately. He talked with them and says unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Every form of fear in your life, from this moment on, the Lord will stop everything. Verse 51, and he went up unto them, me to the sheep, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves, beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genezareth and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship straight away, they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in bed those that were sick where they heard he was and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities a country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him 
that they might touch if it were the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. You'll be made whole. Christ's power, we we'll see here again, over all the storms of life. Here, this storm took place in the dark. It was in the night. The Lord had left them in the boat and he said, go ahead. And he went apart to pray. And it says in the fourth watch of the night, the Jewish people divided the night into four parts. Actually starting from six in the evening until six the following morning. The first watch, six to nine. The second watch, nine to twelve. The third watch, twelve to three a.m. And the fourth watch, the final one, before morning breaks out, from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And we're told that this time, that as they were on the sea, a storm arose. And the Lord Jesus came to them in the fourth watch. That will be the final watch, starting from 3 a.m. Pitch dark. And because of the darkness and the storm, they couldn't find their way. This was a storm of satanic origin. As Christ was away from these disciples, the devil decided, I'll sink them, I'll drown them, I'll destroy them before he gets to them. But the Lord is watching over you. I said the Lord is watching over you. Nothing will sink your boat. Nothing will drown your family. And nothing will destroy you in Jesus' name. You see, there are different storms of life. In the case of Jonah, it was a storm of his own making. And yet, the Lord delivered him. For the people, the sailors that were sailing with Jonah, it was a storm that came on them. As a, wrong of, as a result of wrong association. They wouldn't have experienced that storm, you know. Why it not for their association with the prodigal prophet or the runaway prophet with Jonah? There are some people that have Jonas in their places. Your family, somebody is running contrary to the Lord and you are sheltering that Jonah. Running contrary to the Lord. And you bring a storm on your life. Not because of yourself, but because of the Jonah that is running contrary to the will of God. And you are harboring there. Sometimes it's your company. Your place of work. You have established this by all the capital you have. And then you bring somebody in who is running away from the Lord. A Jonah. Because of that wrong association. You have the storm over your life. Sometimes it's the result of a wrong counsel. It's in Acts chapter 27. That Paul the apostle was there in that ship. The captain of the ship was also there. And the centurion who was directing the whole voyage. Paul the apostle gave the right counsel. But the captain of the ship gave another counsel and the centurion decided to follow. The captain of the ship eventually ran into a storm. And Paul the apostle said, we could have avoided this. This storm is because of wrong counseling. At other times, Hosea tells us, you sow the wind. And you reap while wind. That means you sow something evil. And the result is that there is a storm. But how we thank God that God is a merciful God. Merciful as well as mighty. And whatever storm may be in our lives, 
of satanic origin, of personal consequence, of wrong association, of wrong counseling, of the wrong way of life. The Lord will bring a solution to the problem today in Jesus' name. Christ's power over all the storms of life. Three things we're going to consider. Number one, a progressive path through the storm. A progressive path through the storm. In spite of the storm. Despite the storm. Even though the storm is there, the progress God has appointed you to make in life, you will make that progress in Jesus' name. Now it's uh, so important that as you are here, you are not here by accident. It should be a man of purpose, a woman of purpose, that this period we're having, when the Lord himself is coming to calm all the storms of life, that you make yourself available to the Lord and say, I'm still going to go through life through the progressive path, even though the storm is there. A progressive path to the storm. Number two, the powerful presence of the Savior. The powerful presence of the Savior. The moment the Savior comes in is the master of storm. Master of sea, master of wind, master over the ocean. The powerful presence of the Savior will solve every problem and yours tonight will not be an exception. Your problems are solved. Number three is prevailing power over all sicknesses. And it doesn't matter. We are the people that make a difference between cancer and HIV and tuberculosis and kidney failure and lungs packing up and large heart and blindness and paralysis. He does not make any difference to him. All sicknesses are curable. He will cure you. Is prevailing power over all sicknesses. Number one, a progressive path through the storm. The question is, how can you make progress in spite of the storm? Despite the storm, how can you still make progress in your life? I just read it to you now from Mark chapter 6. Look at that again, verse 47. Mark Chapter 6 from verse 47. And when the even was come, the sheep was in the midst of the sea. And he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing. And before the wind was contrary unto them, about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. He, even though there was no boast, there's nothing impossible for him. And these wonders he'll perform in your life. He will walk over the sea of your life. And then it says, he would have passed by. He would have passed by. He would have passed by. Many people do not stop the Lord. He just goes on his way. But if you cry unto him, if you beckon unto him, if you ask him, Lord, I am here. I'm passing through this. I'm passing through that. He will stop and give you appropriate attention. I want an amen there. Yeah. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and they cried out. They supposed. They supposed. How many people, by supposition, have ruined their own lives? They supposed. I thought. I supposed. He didn't like me. I supposed. He is a spirit. I suppose he is an enemy. Let suppositions die down this new year. Live without suspicion. Did you hear what I said? 
live without suspicion, supposition, sub, sub, uh, suspicion. I think, I thought, I feel, I imagine. You will make your friend an enemy by supposition. You will make your Lord the Savior a spirit by supposition. Your life can become upside down by supposition. And your helper, you make a hinderer out of him. Your developer, you make a destroyer out of him by supposition. No supposition. No suspicion. It goes on to say, For they all saw him, and they were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. It is I, be not afraid. You will not be afraid. How will the problems of life be solved. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Reading from verse 27. Isaiah 40 verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob? Why speakest thou, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord. And my judgment is passed over from my God. When they were in the ship, they couldn't see Jesus. In the, in, this, in the fourth watch, it was so dark. Even though Christ was coming, they took him for his spirit. And they had supposition in their mind. I heard what he said. I suppose he's talking about me. I listen to what he said. I imagine that must be me. Supposition. Why are you talking like that? Why are you hindering yourself? Then it now shows us, verse 28. Has thou not heard? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fateth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. There is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Because of the journey and because of the roughness of the road, you are fainting already. And the Lord gives power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Of tonight, your strength will increase. All the load you are supposed to carry, that's not the load that Satan has given. Whatever load Satan has given, we're going to get rid of that in Jesus' name. I mean, the responsibilities the Lord is laying upon your shoulders. It will give you strength to carry it in Jesus' name. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as eagles. No mountain will stop you anymore. No ocean will stop you anymore. And no hurdle will stop you anymore. It will give you the wings of an eagle. You will fly over your problem, over your mountains, over your ocean, over your hindrances. Have you ever seen an eagle flying in the air? They go so high that if any man will stretch up the hand to catch that eagle, impossible because the eagle is flying at such a great height. The Lord will give you the wings of an eagle. You'll be so high, the hands of your enemy will never reach you. And it says, they shall run and not be weary. 
they shall walk and they shall not faint. That's how you are going to make progress in life. Anytime you sense weakness is coming, wait on the Lord. Anytime you think the enemy might be having an upper hand, just take time apart, wait on the Lord. Anytime there's confusion in your life and it appears the promises the Lord had made in the past, they are not being fulfilled, wait on the Lord. Anytime it appears that the medical examination is saying something that brings confusion in your mind, all you need to do, wait on the Lord. Anytime the winds are blowing contrary, Anytime it appears the opposition is stronger than you can cope with, just wait upon the Lord. Anytime the family, the family circle, this happened, that happened, that happened, and they happen in quick succession. I cannot understand this. Will they stop my journey? Will this destroy me? What am I going to do? Just wait upon the Lord. Anytime in your business, anytime in your ministry, it appears things are going contrary. Just wait upon the Lord. Anytime it appears that God has given you a promise, and it appears the promise is not being fulfilled, and the progress you ought to make, you are not seeing the progress. Wait upon the Lord. If you wait upon the Lord, they will renew your strength. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's a miracle you have been waiting for in that appears. The miracle has not come. Spend some minutes and spend some hours. Wait upon the Lord. The miracle will happen. The miracle must happen. And your weakness will be turned to strength in Jesus' name. Point number two. The powerful presence of the Savior. The powerful presence of the Savior. We're looking at Mark chapter 6. Verses 50 and 51. Mark chapter 6, verse 50. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. He said, I'm your savior, be not afraid. I am your healer, be not afraid. I'm the peace for your life. Be not afraid. I am the rest for your soul. Be not afraid. I'm the builder of your home. The builder of your family. Be not afraid. I'm the one that comes to calm every storm in your life. Be not afraid. I'm the one that comes to silence all your enemies. Be not afraid. I am the power inside you in your life. That will get you to your destination, your destiny. Be not afraid. It is I, the one who called you. It is I, the one who saved you. It is I, the one who has a special interest over your life. It is I. Be not afraid. And he went, verse 51, he went up unto them. Into the ship. And the wind, tell me. Sees the wind sees. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Reading from verse 20 and verse 21. John chapter 6, verse 20. But he says unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The moment he came into the ship, they landed at the haven at the point they ought to land. Tonight, the Lord in a special way is coming into your life. And it will land you where he has ordained, prophesied, predicted 
you are going to end up in Jesus' name. You will not stop your journey in the middle of the sea. The storm will not stop you and draw you before you reach the shore. You left that other shore. You are getting to this other shore. You will not sink in the middle of your journey, of your voyage, in Jesus' name. This family, the Lord will take you to where he has appointed for you. This brother, this sister, the Lord will take you to the place he has appointed in Jesus' name. I made reference to chapter 27 of Acts. Let's go there. Acts chapter 27. Uh, you, you read the whole chapter later yourself. But eventually, look at here from verse 20. Acts chapter 27. And I'm reading here from verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and, no, and no, no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. That's Paul saying over there, we shouldn't have moved. But because of wrong counseling, maybe you have been counseled wrongly. Concerning business, concerning marriage, concerning family, concerning childbearing. Maybe somebody make, made a mistake, a professional made a mistake in your life. And the mistake is like it's costing you now your very life. Tonight, the Lord will reverse the effect of that mistake. And so in verse 21... But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not to have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. For there, what's the reason for this now? It said, not be of good cheer. Everything will be all right. And I come to tell you the same thing tonight. Be of good cheer. In your life, everything will be all right. Panicking, fear, anxiety, worry, about this, about that, forget about that. You're going to go into a new inheritance in Jesus' name. Be of good cheer. But why? Look at verse 22. And I now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. There shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Where are the people that prophesying upon? There shall be no loss of any life among you in Jesus' name. As I see you today, I will see you again. As I see members of your family today, I'll see you again in Jesus' name. Verse 23, for they are stood by me this night. That word for means because, it says, I'm telling you this, because, I'm telling you this for this reason. They stood by me this night, an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. From this passage, I want you to write down seven things. 
that because of this, you know, there is no reason to fear or panic, be anxious or be worried in your life. You know that you will get to the end of the chapter. You will get to the end of the year. You'll get to the end of the journey. Because of this passage, before I come to that passage, let me read to you the final verse, final verse, that is verse 44. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. They escaped all safe to land. They escaped, how many of them? All safe to the land. We escaped, how many of us? All safe to the land. Why? How? Number one, because of his presence with us. His presence with us. Verse 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. His presence with us. There stood by me an angel of the Lord. Because of that presence, his name is Emmanuel. God with us. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. Number one, his presence with us. Number two, is possession of us. Look at that, verse 23. Whose I am. Whose I am is possession of us. You're, you're not just an individual. You're not just like, um, you know, a deacon, Harry. You're an important person. You're a child of God. Because of his possession of us. Number one, his presence with us. Number two, his possession of us. Whose I am. Look at that verse again. And whom I serve. And whom I serve. His program for me. I don't have no plan of my own. I serve him. I have no program of my own. I serve him. I have nothing that I'm doing on earth except for him. I'm his property. I'm a servant. And he has a plan for my life, a project for me. And because of that program, project, and plan, he says, whom I serve. And that's why you are confident that because of your life, because of the purpose of life, that is the reason why you know you're going to get to the end of the journey. There's a powerful presence of the Savior in your life. Because of that, you will not drown in the middle of your voyage in Jesus' name. Number one is presence with us. Number two is possession of us. Number three is program for us. Number four is purpose for us. Look at verse 24. Saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. There is a must in your life. A must. And because of that must, that's the reason you know that you are going to get there. Earlier the Lord had told Paul the apostle, he said, as you have borne witness for me in Jerusalem, you must, M-U-S-T, there is a must. You must bear witness of me in Rome. Even when he was called, the Lord had said, For this purpose I raised him up. And I will show him the things he must suffer. For my name's sake, there is a must in your life. His purpose for us. Number one, because of his presence with me. I reach there because of his possession of me. I reach there because of his program for me. I get there because of his purpose for me. 
I'll get there. Look at that, this verse 24 again. Saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all that sail with thee. It means that, first of all, you yourself, you are protected. And that means, number five now, because of his protection of me. His protection of me. It says, you are protected. And even the people that sail with you, because of association with you, Paul, I've given them to you. I preserve them. I protect them. Those who were associated with Jonah got into trouble because Jonah was walking contrary to the Lord. Those who are associated with Paul, they got protection, preservation because Paul was at the center of the will of God because of his protection of us. Why? Because of his presence with you. How? Because of his possession of you. How? Because of his program for you. How? Because of his purpose for you. Number five, because of his protection of you. Look at that verse again, verse 24. The latter part of that verse 24 there. And lo, God has given you all them that sail with thee. There's a promise there because of his promise to us. Because of his promise to us. And we know that when he promises, he always fulfills because of his promise to us. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Why? Because of his power over us. Because of his power over us. Do you see what the Lord is saying? Do you see what the Lord is assuring of us of? His presence with us. His possession of us. His program for us. His purpose for us. His protection of us. His promise to us. His power over us. Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63, he tells us he's with us. And because he is with us, that's why we know I will reach my destination. I will not stop my journey halfway. How about you? I said, How about you? Isaiah chapter 63, verse 9, he tells us in all their affliction. He was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bared them and carried them all the days of old. His presence with us. In First Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which one, which in time past were not a people. But now are the people of God. Now are the people of God. His possession of us is present with us and he possesses us whom we serve. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. 
He has a program for us. And once you abide in that program, you do not debate. You do not become a prodigal preacher, a prodigal pastor, a runaway preacher, a runaway pastor like Jonah. And you stay with his program and project for you. Yes, a definite thing for you to do in the kingdom. And you abide in that project, in that program. Then you are sure that because of that program with you and for you, it's going to see you through. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life, and then he wants to go on another project, a yo-yo project. A project that looks interesting and inviting, but not of the Lord. A project that makes him abandon the project of the Lord that the Lord has earmarked for him, a yo-yo project. You can check out the meaning of that word yo-yo. It's, uh, you know, something like, it looks interesting and looks uh, inviting, but, you know, it's just it's so superficial. It doesn't have any weight or value. But the one that keeps to that project and program that the Lord has earmarked for him, look at this in verse 26, if any man sub me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Because of his presence with me. Because of his possession of me. Because of his program for me. Then look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, verse 11. Must, must, must. Acts chapter 23, reading from verse 11. Once you realize that a must in your life is not maybe I will do it, maybe I will not do it, there is a plan of God imposed on you. There is a purpose of God imposed on you. And you say, I must. You wake up in the morning, I must. Before you sleep at night, you remind yourself again. You take inventory. How have I done today? Of what the Lord purposed for my life. I must. And you are guided by that guiding star of must in your life. Then you know everything will stay in place. Chapter 23 of Acts verse 11. And the night following. The Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. We're looking at Acts chapter six, chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. The Lord said, I've given you all the people that sail with you. That's not the first time. Just association with Paul in the same prison. Association with Paul on the same stormy sea will bring protection to the rest of them. Acts chapter 16 verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. The foundations of your prison will shake. Your prison will collapse. The doors will be open for you to come out. All your chains and fetters that bind you, they are broken in Jesus' name. And it says, the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Because of association with Paul the Apostle, is protection of us. Now it's promise for us, Hebrews chapter 10. 
Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 23. Hebrews 10. Verse 23. Let us hold fast. The profession of our faith. Without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. It will not disappoint you. I said it will not disappoint you. You will experience the faithfulness of God in Jesus' name. His presence with us. His possession of us. His program for us. His, pro his purpose for us. His protection of us. His promise to us. His power over us. His power in us. His power for us. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. Ephesians 3. Verse 20. Now unto him. That is able to do.